Coming up on Ag Week TV, some badly needed rain fell this week. But drought conditions are forcing many livestock producers to sell off early. On the Soil Health Minute, we'll talk about two easy ways to evaluate soil health in your field. Another wet spring has made for a challenging planting season for farmers here in southeastern South Dakota. And we'll take a closer look at why wheat planting is way down around the U.S. Hello, welcome to AgWeek TV. I'm Shauna Olson. Much of the region got some badly needed rain this week. In fact, some are calling it a billion dollar rain. Parts of central North and South Dakota were starting to suffer from very dry conditions, but rains around the region of up to three inches brought relief for many. Dan Bruns, who runs Bruns Angus Farms near Madison, South Dakota, with his son Jesse, says they just got enough rain this week to get things going. They run about 450 cows and also raise corn, beans, and alfalfa. We're fortunate. Uh, we've caught some rain. We were starting to get on the dry side, but we've we caught a half inch of rain here this last week, and uh, that kind of got you know all the herbicide going and got the crops started pretty good. So we just finished planting beans, so uh, it should give us a good shot now. We needed a. A uh, shot of rain and we got it and it sounds like more coming, but uh, things look pretty good here right now. An Aberdeen, South Dakota sale barn set a one-day sale record recently. It's not the kind of record they want to see this time of year, though. As Mikkel Pates reports, extremely dry conditions are forcing some livestock producers to sell off animals early. Dennis Helwig and his crew at Hub City Livestock are putting in some long hours. One day recently they sold until 1.30 in the morning and we're back at it the next morning. I don't think we ever had 2,500 cows in one day, and especially this time of the year. Them cows should be on grass and, and we shouldn't see any of them. Hub City. The facility moved 1,600 way up cows that will go to kill they were expecting only 1,000. We knew we were going to have a pretty good sized sale, but we never envisioned 1,600 weigh-ups in one day. Yeah, they were lined up both sides of the road, a quarter of a mile. In fact, they're planning to add some Saturday sales, even with the recent rains. Even if it rains a little bit now, it's probably too late. Pastures are like this tile floor in places, you know, it's bare. It's been too early in the year to be this dry, so producers are starting to lighten their load on the grass and feed, by bringing in a lot of extra cattle to the market. Even if they get rain, it's already too late for some. But it's going to just get worse and worse. Uh, next two weeks, I think it's going to be a kind of a limit for a lot of guys. And uh, it's just hard to get enough feed piled up to feed them all through the summer and the winter. So uh, the, the only option is, I guess, is probably sell the, uh, the cows. I'm hoping that they can keep the cows long enough to get the calves big enough so they can wean them and probably keep the calves. If they can do that, it would save some of their uh, expensive of moving their whole herd. The Hellwigs say one bright spot is that prices have remained good, at least for this sale. In Aberdeen, South Dakota, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. For some, the rain also brought storms, packing strong winds, which damaged buildings and trees. It's a second round of severe weather in a week. A tornado touched down near Langdon, North Dakota last weekend, causing quite a bit of damage to trees, farm equipment, some homes, and grain bins. These photos were submitted by Devon and Troy Olson of Langdon. Strong storms delayed planting for some. Scott Cook shows us how some farmers in Pemina County in northeast North Dakota were affected. You better have planned ahead and had some good crop insurance. When Darren Olofsson woke up Saturday morning, his farm looked a lot different after a tornado ripped through the town of Mountain. You want to see your building stand, you want to see your crops grow, and uh, it's, it's just devastating. The twister completely destroyed a 40-year-old barn on Olofsson's property. My uncle Curtis, he called from across the road, said we better watch out there because the barn just exploded. and. As you can see, it did. Last weekend, Olofsson's cornfield was completely green, with stalks about a foot and a half high. Now it's not much more than just a big field of dirt. To finally get the crop all in and feel pretty good about that and then have something like this happen, you know, that, that kind of kicks a guy. 
doesn't really feel too good. Many farmers in the area suffered the same fate as Olafson and now estimate they are four to six weeks behind their planting schedule. Some are even bracing for smaller yields this year. And although Olafson isn't thrilled with the mess he's left to clean up, he's not too worried about the rest of the summer. Not at all. If a farmer weren't optimistic, he wouldn't be a farmer. <laughs> This is the second year of challenging weather for some growers. Too much rain and then hail made for a tough season last year for some farmers in northeast North Dakota. But Jonathan Knutson found things are looking up this year. The 2016 crop season was terrible here in Crystal, North Dakota. We're checking in to see how this year is shaping up. It's really come along fast. Everything went in fast this year. It dried up really well, but we're due for some rain up in this area. I know other areas are getting it, but everything looks pretty good. The wheat is starting to struggle now. The topsoil moisture is going away. So if we could get a half inch to an inch of rain up here, it'd be perfect. It's a long way until harvest, of course, but farmers here are off to a much better start. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. Gansley says he'd like to see about a half an inch of rain every other week for the rest of the growing season. As we told you earlier, many farmers in South Dakota have been suffering through a drought this season. But Barbara Solsa says that's not the case in her region. She and her family are near Haytai in east central South Dakota. They own Solsa Angus and also raise alfalfa corn and soybeans. They're doing very good this year. We've had nice rain two weeks ago. We had three inches of nice slow rain that just penetrated right down and another shower last night. So they just finished the big round bales on the alfalfa and they figure they got three round bales to an acre. While many farmers deal with dry conditions, for some it's far too wet. That story is next on Ag Week TV. Okay, all you left some makers, it's time to boil potatoes and roll that dough. Home of Economy is looking for the region's best tasting lefsa to compete in the Hostfest Lefsa Masters this fall. Home of Economy is your home of lefsa, and as an official pre qualifier, we're conducting lefsa contests at six of our North Dakota stores. Each top winner advances to Hostfest for a chance to be crowned the Lefsa Master. So grab your apron and register online at homeoflefsa.com. WDAY 970 AM has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join the Red River Farm Network team as we partner with Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning at 7 AM, opening markets at 8.30, market updates at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30, closing markets at 1.30. We're committed to reporting agriculture's business on the Red River Farm Network, Ag Week, and WDAY 970 AM. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries Batco belt conveyors field loaders, which minimize damage and help protect grade quality and germination performance of seed. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Contact Chad today. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. The window of opportunity in farming is short. Make sure your Case IH equipment is ready to make the most of it by using only genuine Case IH replacement parts from Titan Machinery. Only original Case IH parts are engineered for maximum life and performance in your equipment. Don't take chances with off-brand parts that may fail when you need your equipment the most. Contact your local Titan Machinery dealership and find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value for your farming operation.
Well, parts of the region are making headlines due to the drought conditions, that's not the case in southeast South Dakota. Farmers there have the opposite situation with too much rain. That's made for a somewhat frustrating planting season. Michelle Rook headed to the field to get the story. After a wet spring here in southeastern South Dakota, the mud is finally starting to dry up enough in this field for Elk Point farmer Doug Hansen to get in and plant. But this makes the second straight year. It's been a real challenge for him. In fact, several inches of rain fell this spring in southeast South Dakota, delaying field work for many farmers. I'd say we're probably two weeks behind normal from from uh, what we usually are. But you know, last year we did have the same situation. On this last field of soybeans, Hansen is planting around mud holes and will also have to replant some corn, which will lower his yield. It's a dead spot, and not only that, you can just as well figure about 50% of the seed around that that does make it is going to be about a half yield. While Hansen stuck with his planned rotation, he did make some other agronomic adjustments with the late seeding dates that could also impact yield potential. We didn't switch any corn and, and bean fields. We pretty much stayed with what we had designated earlier this spring, but we did, we did change some maturities of some beans. And even though it's been another frustrating spring, Hansen says he still enjoys the planting season. In Old Point, South Dakota, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Hansen says he planted more beans this year, which was an advantage with the weather delays. There's a shift in acreage this year, with soybeans taking the lead. Wheat acres are the lowest seen in decades. Leaders in the wheat industry say they're working hard to get those acres back. The wheat industry is hurting. Uh, we need to get trade back. We need to make sure we have a strong Title I program, strong crop insurance, balanced conservation and we need to continue to enforce WTO policies against China. Chandler Gould is the CEO of the National Wheat Association. He says winter wheat acres are the lowest since 1908. Part of that we do have things has to do with two things. One, in the ARC program, and we're working with our other commodity colleagues on this, uh, there was a convergence issue that the other commodities didn't have where our future price got further apart from our cash price. So that was one of the issues we had with ARC. PLC, 550 is nowhere close really to cost of production and, and I want to clarify by saying the Farm Bill's job is not to put you in the black. The Farm Bill's job is to make sure you don't go out of business. He says they need to provide certainty to farmers and lenders that they have a market. Because it's affecting our lenders. They're a little concerned with when we don't have any free trade agreements or we're pulling out of trade agreements, where's the wheat going to go? And we've already had a couple of our growers in, in uh, western parts of Kansas and other states where the bankers have simply said that we can't use ARC and PLC as part of your collateral to give you an operating loan. So we're already starting to see the effects of what's happening in rural America. He says the current price of wheat is a reflection of the piles sitting around. He says if we don't find a way to move it, Russia, the Ukraine and France will fill the gap. NOG is also uh, working with our sister organization, U.S. Wheat, uh, to double the funding for MAP and FMD funding so that we can help continue to build uh, foreign markets and so that we can uh, continue to move wheat. But what I really need is for the administration to tell us, where is that first bilateral going to be? We're happy to work with you, but I need to know what direction to head in first. Gould adds that the U.S. needs to start trading and doing more business with Cuba and its 11 million people. Up next on Ag Week TV, much needed rain finally came to some parts of the Dakotas. Your Ag Weather forecast is next. And later on the Soil Health Minute, we'll talk about two great indicators of a healthy soil. The Stockyards Ag Experience tells the story of agriculture beginning with the Sioux Falls Stockyards. You will learn about how agriculture impacts our region and the world, and the science and culture that make it all possible. The Stockyards Ag Experience barn features interactive exhibits and a renovated 1880s barn at Falls Park in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Stockyards Ag Experience showcases agriculture's story from the farm to your table. For more information, call 605-332-1917 or online at stockyardsagexperience.org. 
Located in the heart of the Red River Valley, Bloomfield Enterprises sells the finest trailers in the business. Family owned and operated since 1997, Bloomfield Enterprises prides themselves on carrying a wide variety of trailers for customers to choose from. With Bloomfield Enterprises, you can be assured that customer service is more than just a phrase. With a full service shop and repair center, we are committed to take care of our customers even after the sale. Whether you're in the market for a new trailer or good quality farm equipment, we have just what you're looking for. Call today or visit us online at bloomfieldtrailers.com. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. As of Tuesday, the day that a pretty big rain system moved up through the eastern parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota, the northern plains had a serious a drought problem, really, as there was in the United States. Down in the southwest, most of California has seen drought conditions ease. Of course, it's desert, dry area, but relative to normal conditions down there, not too bad. There is some pretty serious drought in the state of Florida. But this is also largely irrigated uh, farming that goes on down here. And you're talking uh, vegetable crops and citrus. And uh, it's just not a big problem. But it's been quite dry in the northern plains. But look at where the drought was. And look at where the heavy rain was. These were the rain amounts on Tuesday for that big round of thunderstorm complex. A lot of the green stuff was about one to two inches, locally even more from uh, west central Minnesota into northwest Minnesota, much of eastern North Dakota, some pretty substantial rain. However, it's not the kind of rain that ends the dryness. And you'll notice the western half of this area did not get very much. So we're still actually pretty dry in the northern plains, and that's just not quite going to weigh yet. We still need it to rain pretty regularly over the next few weeks as we get into the hotter parts of summer. That's assuming it gets very hot. Here's what we're looking at for the jet stream this week. We're actually starting off with some cool weather and some rain showers this weekend. That rain will move off into the Great Lakes and not turn into very much, but it will eventually yield some ta trailing uh, thunderstorms down through the Midwest during the week. Probably not a lot of widespread soaking. It does look like late in the week there will be a chance of another shower thunder shower system coming through as the jet begins to rise just a bit. Southwest is going to stay parched. One other thing we'll have to watch is there's the beginnings of a, what looks like a tropical system down near the Yucatan. That has a chance to move into the Texas or Mexican coastline in about a week or so. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Temperature-wise, we're starting to see the heat of summer build up in the southwest and into the southern plains. Of course, it's not really uh, an agricultural season except for a cotton crop down in Texas, but it will be quite hot across the southern part of the country. And with the jet stream in this pattern, the difference between very cool and very warm will be significant. I think most of the northern plains, for the most part, will be on the mild side, but we may see the southern parts, parts of South Dakota, get into a couple of warm days. The second week, which will be the last week of July, I do look for there to be a split forming in the jet out along the western part of North America, which won't yield a lot of rainfall and won't change the temperature pattern very much, but it will bring up at least a possibility of a few showers for that last week of June. So summation, here's what we're talking about. Heat waves, southern plains and southwestern U.S., that's typical late June. Mild weather for the most part here in the northern plains. Not a lot of heat, which is pretty good news because we are still somewhat dry despite last Tuesday's northern plains rain.
Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. My name is Carson, and I'm a fourth generation corn farmer. The corn that's grown in North Dakota, you could probably trace all over the world. Back growing up, it was always hauled to the local elevator, and now we haul directly to an ethanol plant who processes that corn into a clean burning fuel. The North Dakota ethanol industry uses over 150 million bushels of corn and returns $640 million to the state economy. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. Evaluating how healthy a soil is doesn't have to be complicated. In the Soil Health Minute, NDSU Extension Specialist Abby Wick talks about what to look for in a shovel full of soil. Farmers often ask me how to evaluate soil health in their field. The easiest way to do that is by setting up a good comparison. The field I'm in right now has been long-term no-till, has a history of cover cropping, and also a diverse rotation. The field we'll compare with is a field that has been chisel plowed and field cultivated in the spring. The easiest way to evaluate soil health is to take a shovel into the field. So I'll walk you through what I look for when evaluating soil health. So the first thing I notice in a no-till soil is how it holds together. And as you break it apart, it forms really nice aggregates. So you can see multiple sizes, So as you're feeling a soil to to determine the soil health, you're you're looking for that aggregate structure and the roots that are are holding those aggregates together. So the other thing I would look for when I'm evaluating soil health is for earthworm activity. If moisture and temperature conditions are right, you may find between 5 and 10 earthworms per shovel full of soil. That would indicate a very healthy system where the earthworms have habitat to survive and also a resource to eat. We'll take a look at a soil from a tilled field so you can get a comparison. So taking a shovel out of this field, you can see how the shovel just sinks into that soil because there's no bottom to it and there's no root structure or anything holding that soil together. It falls apart as soon as you pick it up and there's just, there's no aggregation. Aggregates and earthworms are great indicators of soil health and it's easy to evaluate them by just taking a shovel to the field. The North Dakota Farmers Union is holding a series of meetings for potential investors in a soybean crushing facility and refinery. The North Dakota Soybean Processors Plant will be located near Spiritwood, North Dakota. It will use 125,000 bushels of soybeans a day. Here's a list of the meeting sites and dates. Minnesota Soybean Processors will serve as the company's managing member. A minimum investment of $40,000 is required. Coming up on Ag Week TV, a company is getting ready to launch a shrimp growing operation in Minnesota. We'll tell you how that will give grain growers a boost.
Adventure awaits at the Farmers Union Camp presented by the North Dakota Farmers Union. Farmers Union Camp is the perfect place for young campers to develop cooperation, teamwork, and leadership skills. Campers will enjoy theme nights, skits, games, talent shows, and more. Camps are held at Wesley Acres and Hart Butte in June, July, and August. Register by May 15th to get $25 off your camp fee. For camp dates and more information, visit us at ndfu.org or call 800-366-8331. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him? would not do it. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, Increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel. It starts with soybeans. It's fueling America. WDAY 970 AM has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join the Red River Farm Network team as we partner with Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning at 7 AM. Opening markets at 830 Market updates at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30. Closing markets at 1.30. We're committed to reporting agriculture's business on the Red River Farm Network, Ag Week, and WDAY 970 AM. that plans to make Minnesota the center of shrimp growing and processing is ready to get started. The True Shrimp Company announced this week it's locating its first production facility called A Harbor in Laverne, Minnesota, and its first hatchery in Marshall. The company is also opening an employee training facility next to its lab in Ballotin, Minnesota. Construction is scheduled to begin this year. True Shrimp's president and CEO says this is a major step toward developing a large-scale shrimp industry in the state. It hasn't been done anywhere else in the world. Americans eat 1.6 billion pounds of shrimp a year, and 80% of it comes from Southeast Asia. The shrimp are fed soybeans, corn, and hard red wheat, which will come from local farmers. Eventually, the company plans to build harbors to grow shrimp all around the state. True Shrimp will also package the shrimp for retail sales. This week's photo of the week comes from Natasha Matson in Alvarado, Minnesota. Two-year-old Eli and seven-month-old Grayson watch Daddy from the tractor as he fills the planter. If you want to see your ag photo on Agweek TV, email it with along with a description to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching Agweek TV. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.